Hello and welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday today and just two days ago on Sunday, Monica and I decided that we were going to head down to Sicily. The aim, in two to three days we will leave. We've booked nothing at all. We'll probably just book everything, including the ferry, on the morning that we wake up. But a few things I must do before then, because the trip will involve taking the Fiat, towing the trailer, and the Bonneville attached. So I need to make sure everything's in decent enough shape. This ridiculous looking contraption that's been gaffer taped for the entire Tenerife journey and also a Euro trip a year before that. That's going to be replaced with something a little bit smarter. So I'll head off to Halfords to get that. And when I'm in Halfords, I'll also get a battery for the Bonneville because at the very least, the, a new battery can only help with the atrocious starting issues of the Bonneville. Fiat, I am not servicing the Fiat. It needs a service, I think, in about, I think it was last service 13 months ago. I'm not servicing it here because what better opportunity to get it serviced than by a fine Italian craftsman's hands in Sicily. Take it home, get it done by the experts there. What a little treat for that. And this will be probably within 3,000 miles of 200,000 miles by the time we get there. That is the ramp of course for the trailer. Basically by the end of today, I want everything in place. So tomorrow, Wednesday, probably the day before we leave, everything will be beautifully relaxed. We'll just pack up a couple of bags and start heading down south. It's about one and a half thousand miles and I would guess it will take maybe four days traveling or so and I cannot wait. So we're in Monica's mum's allotment at the moment. I'm just going to get a few tools and I'll take you with me on a day of preparation. <laughs> No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil's on my trail. I've been running. Step one done, trailer into the parking spot, ready to get sorted out. I just need to figure out a better way to attach the number plates to the back of the trailer. You can see where it's sheared off there with the rusty steel. I just had to tape it onto the back there so the number plate wouldn't fall off. The Bonneville, well, it's got a constant, very, very slight, but very definite oil leak. Not enough to ever have to fill it up, but you know, I may have to have a look at that in due course. Okay, I'm off to Halfords, which is a kind of generalist automotive store, to hopefully find a battery for the Bonneville there. If not, not 100% sure where I'll get it from. It's funny, now I know that the Bonneville has been written off after finding out a few weeks ago, everything starts kind of falling into place. I just start having flashbacks of a few situations. For example, I got a year and a half ago a Hepcom Becker front crash bar for the Bonneville, as well as the rear luggage rack, which is currently on the Bonneville, the chrome thing. And I tried putting the crash bar on and it 
it didn't even come close to fitting properly. Not even close. And I thought, God, that's strange. And then I tried fitting the rear luggage rack from Hepcurn Becker, and only three of the four bolts actually lined up. And I thought, God, would a, a German company with German-made aftermarket parts for the Bonneville really be out of kilter in that way? Would they be out of alignment? I, I struggled to believe that was the case, but I had no other explanation. And now looking back, I think it must be because the Bonneville was written off. And even though to the naked eye, maybe the frame is, it's in line and it's legally safe to pass an MOT to get back on the road. I think now because the Bonneville has been a legal write off, the frame is very, very slightly out of alignment because of the incident, whatever happened to write off the bike. So it's technically safe and that's all fine and good. But when you need zero tolerances, like attaching four bolts to the frame, it shows up, which I found quite eye-opening. So it's often things that you don't immediately realize when you find out that your car or bike's been written off. You think, oh, it's fine, it's fine. But when, then when you start doing things to your vehicle, you realize, ah, hmm, that's an issue. £155 spent. So, UASA battery activation date April 2022. So, I'm hoping that may transform the starting success rate of the Bonneville. This is great value, actually. This £15. I thought it'd be more like £70. So, that's a brand new one of these. It comes with the cable and everything to attach to the back of the car. So, I'll get that all set up. UK sticker for the bike, a few bulbs as well, so I don't get fined if a bulb blows in France or Italy. And apart from that, oh, this as well. I haven't really come across these. This starts up to a two litre vehicle, it's 60 pounds. You just, you can charge it overnight and then just effectively jump start your motorbike if anything happens. It means you don't need to actually take the battery out and charge it so i thought that's a really good backup plan in case i get stranded somewhere in italy while on a ride right that's literally everything needed now there's not anything else needed for the trip we're good to go on every element from the car to the motorbike side of things well, this is a good feeling new battery and new screws as well because i lost my screws for the last battery and I don't think the screws I got were that good quality and it may not have given the best connection to the battery. So not just a new battery, but also new screws to attach it. To confirm, I checked the battery literally about two minutes ago and it didn't start. Okay, here goes. Brand new battery, 2022. Of course, there will be no issues at all. And I'll bet a lot of money on this. Starting first time. Hopefully this is the start of stress-free riding. That's a good feeling to have such a strong start. Okay, battery done. Next up, the awful looking number plate. Oh, 
<sighs> this. This wire is not long enough to go from the end of the trailer to the car. And I don't know if an extension exists to attach to this to give me an extra half a meter. Ah, nothing's ever as simple as you plan. Okay, I'll have to Google that later while I figure out, so annoying, figure out in my mind what to do with that number plate mount. This looks genuinely interesting for me because this is smaller than I thought. That is the power bank extremely light, the power bank to be able to jump start the bike. Instructions. This in essence is everything. That's the power bank, you just charge that at home. That is the USB wire that you use to plug into a power socket in your home. Hmm. Very interesting, so this just attaches into the side here attaches like that. I can see the lights on there. In fact, I can see it's almost full there. And you just plug those into the battery and that's it. That means that that, in theory, if you're someone like me who doesn't 100% trust their battery, that's not a massive amount of stuff to take on a road trip if you're not sure, for example, cold start or if it just, if it just doesn't fancy starting in the morning. Take that, charge it overnight and you've got something that will guarantee your bike will start in the morning. I think that will be something that I'll always take around with the Bonneville now. Brilliant, and 60 pounds, seems like fair value. You'll see in the corner, that is the old wooden ramp for the trailer. That's about 15 kilos, and that will be going to the dump tomorrow and replaced with a much lighter aluminum one. That was atrocious. Slippery, snapping, everything bad you can imagine from a ramp, so I'll be delighted to see that gone. I'm just going to try and tidy up, I can't believe I'm saying it, the current dreadful number plate holder, just in case I can't get an extension and I run out of time. I really don't know why I always leave it to the last minute. I had a lot of fun reading through your comments on the Land Rover Defender. Thank you for sending those through. I read every single comment with a genuine huge amount of interest. I, I really want one. I'm, I'm still, I'm a bit scared by the overheads purely because I've currently got a Fiat 500 and I checked the overheads and the cost for the past 20,000 miles or so and it's cost two rear tyres and two brake pads. I think about 90 pounds in 15 to 20,000 miles or so. It's not realistic to expect the Defender to be similar to that but I still need to mentally prepare. And the Kawasaki Z650 RS, that was a much more polarising bike than I thought it would be because I expected it to be almost universally popular but it seems especially the bikers who remember the original four pot Z650 from the late 1970s they say to be a worthy successor to that bike it really had to be a four pot it had to be a four cylinder engine this two cylinder engine means it can't be a worthy successor to that bike I found it fascinating reading your comments
hard to think that it was actually 13 months ago that we were sat right here with the Road King special directly outside having a coffee two days before. We were heading off to Tenerife and I was in, I think I was in a jacket on that day a month earlier. It shows how nice this summer and autumn has been because still I'm in a shirt. Early October and genuinely I don't need anything else. It's been a stunning, stunning late summer and early autumn. So much so that we've actually stayed an extra two or three weeks longer than we were planning on. I need to book tomorrow the ferry. And I'll put a screen mirroring here of the exact route that we're going to take. But if I go onto Google Maps now and I type, for example, Sicily. 29 hours. 29 hours of solid driving. Let's see if the internet's going to be fast enough. Here we go. So, one day, one day and five hours, 1,689 miles. It's telling us to go to the south coast of England, to Calais, all the way down. It's going to be a big one. I think we may, down through Germany, maybe just miss the east side of Switzerland, to the east of Milan, all the way down through Italy, almost directly through somewhere I've never been, Rome. And then you start getting right down to the south, all the way down to the boot of Italy, and then we'll have to get a ferry. I've never done it before. I'm guessing you get a ferry from Villa San Giovanni over to Messina in Sicily. I think the whole thing, it says one day, five hours. I think, I think four days and we should do it. Mm -hmm. You ready, Monica? Yes. I can't wait for this. It should be an incredible trip. I think we'll probably do three nights and we'll just do it ad hoc. So as we're going down, whenever we get tired, just pull into a little village or something like that. So, one or two days we'll head off. It should be nice and easy because we don't need to pack up everything we own this time like we usually have to, so it should be extremely easy. I can't believe that the next video will be driving down to Italy. We will, of course, take you with us the whole way. I think this time I've planned a little bit better than usual, so everything should go <laughs> swimmingly. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming on. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you all in the next one.